Welcome to the Building a Measurement Plan module of Measurement for Quality Improvement. Six short videos have been created to support your QI learning on measurement and to build capability among family medicine residents, the faculty and interprofessional team members of the Department of Family and Community Medicine at the University of Toronto, members of its Quality Program Committee, Community of Practice members, and the Quality Improvement Decision Support Specialist so that all can confidently use data for improvement. This module provides information on getting started with measurement for QI. At the end of this module, you will be able to summarize what a family of measures is and its relevance to QI, identify the steps required to develop a measurement plan, differentiate between the types of measures used in improvement work, and describe the importance of operational definitions. As discussed in Module 1, measurement is critical to quality improvement as it enables us to learn whether the changes we are making are actually improvements. Teams that take the time early on in their improvement journey to discuss the use of measures will be more successful in understanding how the changes they are making are affecting their work. Teams should create a measurement plan which provides details on the measures they will use, why each measure is required, the operational definition for each measure, the source of the data for each measure, the data collection process for each measure, how the measures will be displayed, and whether baseline data is available for the area of focus for improvement. If a team can provide these details for their measures, they will have created a solid measurement plan which will support their quality journey and assist them in achieving their aims. Primary care is a system, something described in the Improvement Guide as an interdependent group of people, procedures, and equipment working together towards a common purpose. The common purpose brings the parts of the system together, while the interdependence is the glue that forms the relationships and interactions among the parts. It is highly unlikely that one measure can help us understand such a complex environment as primary care. Therefore, Multiple measures are necessary to understand and evaluate the impact of the changes we make to our system. These multiple measures are called a family of measures and usually include a set of three to eight balanced measures that help us understand the impact of our improvement work on the system. The family of measures is called balanced because it includes three different types of measures, outcome measures, process measures, and balancing measures. Change on the front line versus changes to a whole system also requires a family of measures, but the actual number of measures must be driven by the principle of collecting just enough data to learn. It is recommended to always examine changes from multiple points of view, but in reality, the number of measures that may be required to make changes on the front line might be less than the 3 to 8 recommended for a balanced family of measures. The burden of the data collection must not outweigh the value of the measure in helping us learn about the process we are trying to improve. An outcome measure tells us how the system is performing, and in good outcome measures, we should hear the voice of the patient. An outcome measure should answer the so what question and tell us information about something that is important to the patient. An outcome measure helps us learn about our system and whether we are fulfilling our aim. If our outcome measures reflect the voice of the patient, then process measures are sometimes referred to as the voice of the steps in the process. Process measures help us learn by showing us whether the changes we are making result in improved performance. Process measures should logically be tied to our outcome measures. The relationship between the process measure and the outcome measure should make intuitive sense. Process measures tell us how the parts of the system are performing and therefore are very helpful when we are testing our changes using our plan, do, study, act cycle. Typically, process measures show improvement before outcome measures. In Module 1, one of the key messages was that in improvement work, we should collect just enough data to help us make decisions about the next step. This principle should be kept in mind when identifying process measures, as this is often where we get carried away with too many measures and too much data. 
Balancing measures are the measures that provide information on our improvement work from a different point of view. They are often the unintended consequences of our improvement work. Let's go through a primary care example to demonstrate the differences in these types of measures. A team that is working on chronic disease management would need to develop a family of measures to demonstrate whether the work they are doing is resulting in improvement. Outcome measures for diabetes work could include the percentage of patients with diabetes who have an A1C less than or equal to 7, or the percent of patients with diabetes who have a blood pressure less than or equal to 130 over 80. In these outcome measures, we hear the voice of the patient because they are from the patient's perspective rather than the system's perspective. Examples of process measures might be the percentage of patients with diabetes who have had a retinopathy screening in the past 24 months, or the percentage of patients with diabetes who have received a comprehensive foot exam in the past 12 months. These reflect processes in the management of chronic disease. The balancing measure might be the number of visits a patient makes to the clinic per month. This is important to examine because the unintended consequence of doing more tests would be more visits, which could be inconvenient to the patient. Once a team has identified their family of measures, it is very important to create operational definitions for each of those measures. Operational definitions are sometimes referred to as technical specifications. To contribute to learning, measures must be collected in the same way each time, regardless of who is collecting the data. If measures are not collected consistently, changes may be erroneously attributed to the changes we have made, when really they are just changes to the measures due to the way the data was collected. Good operational definitions ensure that the measures that are collected are reliable and can actually contribute to the team's learning about whether their changes are improvements. This concludes Module 2 of Measuring for Improvement. As a result of watching this video, you should now be able to summarize what a family of measures is and why it is relevant to QI, identify the steps in developing a measurement plan, explain the different types of measures used in improvement work, and describe the importance of operational definitions.